Drink packages aren't cheap, but you want to make sure that you avoid the mistakes that are going to waste money and that you get the most out of your drink package on a cruise. Hi there, I'm Ilana from the website lifewellcruise.com. Welcome or welcome back to my channel. Now, whether you have booked a cruise and you're thinking about adding on a beverage package, or perhaps you're thinking of booking a cruise with an all-inclusive perks package that includes a beverage package, I know that you wanna make sure that you get the most value out of your drink package. Based on my own experience and that of other cruisers, there are definitely some drink package mistakes that you want to avoid, as well as some tips and tricks that you'll want to know. Now, before I get started, I did wanna mention that if you like this video, if you find it helpful, informative, or enjoyable in any way, then please do give the video a big thumbs up. I really do appreciate it. And please subscribe to the channel if you haven't done so already. Let's get started. Number one, let's get the obvious mistake out of the way. It is not purchasing your beverage package before your cruise. Now, there are a couple of reasons, especially now that you really should purchase your drink package before your cruise. Now, the first reason is that it's likely going to be 10 to 20% cheaper if you do purchase it before your cruise. You could do that online, just taking a look at your reservation. But the next reason is that a lot of the prices on cruises are increasing. And I think that we have reason to believe that it is possible that the cruise drink packages will increase this year as well. If they do go up, if you've purchased it before your cruise, you will have locked in that better price. And that in itself is a reason to purchase purchase it before your cruise. Now, by the way, if you do purchase it and if it comes on sale before your cruise for a lower price, you could usually cancel it and simply book it again at that cheaper price. Number two, not getting the better or those top shelf liquor brands. Now, when it comes to the alcohol that is included in your beverage package, you may have certain brands that are included in the package. However, do not expect that the bartenders will automatically give you those premium liquors or those top shelf liquors in your drink. Instead, they may be giving you a house brand or a cheaper brand. If you do prefer to have that other brand or that better brand, and after all, you have paid for it in your package, then you will likely need to ask for it. Now this can happen with any of the different beverage packages, but I do think it's particularly a mistake if you have upgraded your package to a premium package, because I know a lot of times we are assuming that the bartenders or the waiters are giving us that premium liquor or even that better bottle of wine that is included in the package. So something that you'll wanna do is ask for the brand that you like by name. If you're not 100% sure, just ask the bartender which are the top shelf liquors. Now the bartender on our last did tell me that oftentimes they have their premium bottles that are placed in a different area of the bar, in this case behind them on an upper shelf. And something else that you could do, which I will do before my next cruise, is that you could look on the Cruise Line website, take a look at which liquor brands are included in your package, and you can either screenshot that list or you could download it to your phone or you can print it out before your cruise. Number three, not taking advantage of all the non-alcoholic beverages that are included in many beverage packages on a cruise. Now, oftentimes when we think about the beverage package, we're oftentimes thinking about the alcoholic beverages, the value that each of those have to calculate whether or not it's worth it to get a beverage package on a cruise. However, something to think about is all of the specialty coffees, maybe even try the specialty teas. Now, something that we started to do on a recent cruise is get frozen coffees when we came back from those excursions on a hot Caribbean cruise. That was really something nice in the afternoon. You could also get vitamin water or a Red Bull or an energy drink. And of course, don't forget that fresh squeezed juice and water bottles or cans. Which brings me to my next mistake, and that is not taking water bottles back to your cabin. Now, many cruise ships don't have water bottles anymore. They have cans or aluminum bottles instead. So in any case, any of the to-go water that you can get at a bar, a mistake that many people make is not bringing those back to their cabin. Now, what you can do is you can actually ask your cabin attendant to empty out your mini fridge. And what you can do is stock up your fridge with water bottles or cans of water instead. This way you're gonna have them for shore excursions and you can have them in your cabin as well. 
The thing that you don't want to do, and this actually did happen to my son, is get back to your cabin at night and maybe you're very thirsty and of course you could still drink the water from the cabin, but instead maybe drink the mini bar water bottles of Evian. You don't want to do that. I think they ran me about $4.75 a bottle instead of the water that was included in the package. Now I do have a little tip. Every time you are out and you're heading back to your cabin, if you are passing a bar, grab a couple of water bottles on the way. Number five, getting a drink package for every single cruise itinerary. Now, personally, I really like having a beverage package because I like that convenience. However, there are some cruise itineraries where it may not be worth it for you to get a drink package. Now, obviously you have to make this calculation for yourself, but if you're on a very port intensive itinerary, for instance, if you have four, five, or even six ports out of a seven or eight day cruise, is the drink package still going to be worth it for you? If you're on an itinerary that is nine or 10 nights, perhaps in the Mediterranean, and you have many ports of call, and you're gonna be off the ship for long days, you might be absolutely exhausted at night, hardly going to the club, and hardly drinking at all. In that case, it may be worth it for you to simply pay per drink, or even bring a couple of wine bottles with you on board, and skip the cost of the drink package, and put it on excursions. By the way, please let me know if you always get a drink package, or if you consider a drink package, depending on the itinerary, Itinerary, and if you do calculate if it's worth it, please let me know down in the comments below. Okay, so now let's talk about the perks packages. Now, even if you have a perk package, you still wanna know what is included in the different beverage packages. However, when it does come to some of those free perks packages, they really can be a good value and it is worth looking at. So some of those cruise lines that offer free perks packages are Princess that has Princess Plus and Princess Premier, Celebrity, which has the all included, and you do get a basic beverage package and you can upgrade to a premium package for a pretty good value if you like. And you have as well Norwegian's Free at Sea. Now something to note with Norwegian's Free at Sea is that specialty coffee is not included. Now another mistake that people make when it comes to the beverage packages is not understanding how the gratuities or the tipping works when you do get a drink or when you purchase the package. So the way it works is when you're purchasing a package is that your gratuities on the value of the package are going to be charged at the time of purchase. So in other words, if you're purchasing a beverage package and it is for instance $80 per person per day, you are going to be charged that amount plus an additional 18 to 20% depending on the cruise line as a gratuity on the value of that package. And that means when you're on your cruise, you are not going to be required to pay a tip every time you get a drink that will not be charged to you. Now, of course, if you want to give an additional amount, if you wanna give an additional dollar, for instance, to the bartender or the waiter, you're welcome to do so, but there is absolutely no obligation and there was a tip that was already paid. Now, getting back to those cruise itineraries, take a look to see if your cruise itinerary does include one of the cruise lines private islands. Now some cruise line private islands do actually have a beverage package that works on the private island. So for instance, Royal Caribbean's Coco Cay, if you are in Coco Cay and you do go over to that big pool, that Oasis Lagoon, you can actually take full advantage of your beverage package on that day. So of course, if you're on a Caribbean cruise or a Bahamas cruise, this is a really great extra value. Now, if you're cruising with Princess, you could use your beverage package when you're at Princess K's. However, if you're cruising with Carnival, the beverage package doesn't work in Half Moon K, their private island. Now, every cruise line is different, so make sure that you know before you go. Now, another mistake not to make is ordering only off the bar's menus. Now, of course, the bar menus are a great way to try different types of drinks, maybe drinks that you've never had before. I really like to do that, especially sometimes you do get really different menus. However, if you have a drink that's tried and true that you just love, like maybe you're at the pool and you love to have a pina colada or you love to have a margarita or a Miami Vice, simply ask the bartender and almost all the time they are able to make any of those standard drinks and even some of the different concoctions that you might have in mind. Purchasing the alcohol beverage package when two people in the cabin don't drink. Now, most cruise lines have a rule that if you are buying the beverage package, two people in the cabin do need to buy that same alcoholic beverage package because there is no sharing 
on a cruise ship. However, we do hear that sometimes there are exceptions. So something that you'll want to do in particular, if somebody really doesn't drink, so not if somebody drinks lightly, but somebody really does not drink alcohol is that you can call customer service ahead of time before you buy that beverage package and you can explain the situation. And oftentimes what they'll allow you to do is buy the beverage package that includes the alcohol for one person in the cabin and the other person in the cabin can buy the non-alcoholic premium beverage package. So that would include frozen mocktails, juice, specialty coffee. And while it's not guaranteed, it's certainly worth a try. Now, something else that you'll want to know is what are the drink limits? Is there a limit of the amount of drinks that you can drink per day? And what is the price threshold that limit on the drinks? So what I mean is on some cruise lines, you do have a limitation of how many drinks you can have that include alcohol. So Princess, for instance, uh, Carnival as well, you have a limitation of 15 alcoholic drinks per day. You can still have specialty coffees and other types of drinks, but there is a limitation on those alcoholic drinks. And as well, there is a limit as to what is the price of the drink. So many cruise lines do have a limit. It may be $11 per drink. It might be drinks up to $14. It might be drinks up to $15. You just wanna know that before you go on your cruise. In some cases, you may wanna upgrade to a premium package if you think that you'll enjoy those premium wines, top shelf liquors, and even sparkling water. Now, while you can usually pay the difference between the cost of the drink that is included and the additional cost, it may be worth it depending on the brands that you like to drink and how many drinks a day you may have to actually simply upgrade. Now, when it comes to the beverage packages on a cruise, there may be drinks that are available that you don't even know about. And it's definitely a mistake to not check out the entire cruise ship to see what may be available. Now, in particular, something that could be really interesting and maybe worth trying, especially if you're on a cruise and you have the package anyway, are those fruit smoothies and in particular those healthy ones so you can get like that fresh vegetable and fruit juice that is available at the Vitality Cafe or at the Spa Cafe. And even if these are not drinks that you usually have at home, it might be worth giving it a try on a cruise. Now, while this next one is maybe a little bit of a less healthy option, I stand by it. It is not treating yourself when you're on a cruise. If you love a mimosa, in the morning, go for it. You're on vacation. If you like to have a Bloody Mary, I guess technically these are a little bit healthy, right? But have this, after all, it's five o'clock somewhere. And of course it doesn't have to be alcohol. Why not have that cappuccino or that latte in the morning time instead of the drip coffee? Now I hope that you enjoyed these cruise drink package tips and mistakes to avoid. I know there are tons more. So if you have any cruise drink package tips that worked for you, please let me know down in the comments below. We will help each other for our next cruise. And if you did enjoy this video, please do give it a big thumbs up. I really do appreciate it. And please subscribe to the channel if you haven't done so already. Bye for now and happy cruising.